I don't know many, how many of you heard of permaculture, but permaculture is a concept that was around before sustainability. And um, this is taken from the Wikipedia, uh, a branch of ecological design, and premised on systems thinking. So for the last five or ten years, I've developed a specialism around systems thinking. Sociocracy is a system of dynamic governance. And over the last five or ten years, I'm a professionally trained mediator. I'm now understanding how to invest in solutions that have the potential to be taken up virally at a community level. And I also have a specialism around community currency. I know I've spoken to many of you here today about community money. You can't really have a local economy without your own local money. So open money is a new way in which communities will be able to develop their own currencies to measure economic activity within a family, a community, a state, or whatever. So now it was great to follow on from the presentation on obesity because I'll be touching on this in my presentation but this slide is to say if you don't eat you die generally so <laughs> and if we don't eat or we are facing situations in which food is scarce then we have these definitions around food poverty and food security and nutrition security in the UK there is um, apparently 9 to 13 million people who are in deep poverty. Clearly this has an impact on food poverty. These figures for the Children's Food Trust show the prevalence of obesity in children and you can see that in fact in the most deprived areas up to 23% are displaying signs of obesity. And this slide I put in this morning this has just come through from Harmonton University. Uh, year R is reception. This is where children are actually going to uh, reception year. And year six is when they leave the primary school. And it shows this amazing statistic. You can see in year six, obese and overweight in 2012 is now up to 44%, which is staggering the impact on, on, on health in this country. And we showed well, you demonstrated so wonderfully well. This is the trend through the, the whole of the, what used to be the Western world. So the London Assembly, London, welcome to London, is actually realizing this and starting to conceptualize plans to deal with food poverty. And what is interesting, this is a picture of a food bank where uh, donated food is collected through mainly churches and other good causes and redistributed to people who are in receipt of emergency food aid. Yet the picture that the London Assembly show is one of fresh fruit and vegetables, which is interesting, we'll come to that later. Here is a map which shows the location of the food banks, the blue dots, and the brown areas are the areas of most deprivation. So there is a correlation there between the food banks and areas of deprivation. And I guess I should show you Hackney where I'm based, which is this area here. I actually live there. Close enough. So food banks have been running in Canada. Uh, Miriam Salah, who presented in Abu Dhabi, actually ran the Montreal system. Um, very well structured, well financed and resourced by corporate businesses. And they do provide individuals with emergency food boxes whereas in the UK it's a new system and this is mainly run by an organization a new organization called the Trussell Trust where vouchers are given by social services and nurseries and schools and doctors can issue three vouchers which last for two weeks gives access to that dried food completely dried food high fat dried food and the common features is that the emergency food um, in this country is given and then clients are passported 
to social services or agencies to help with their financial situation. Now, the other example in this country is an organisation called Food Cycle, which collects food waste from supermarkets that's coming to the sell-by dates and then cooks the food up and distributes it for free. And the claims they have that have served 6,000 meals since 2008. So the Children's Food Trust, this is their answer. Their solution is to invest in children's food and nutrition by using schools to provide free of charge breakfast clubs, school lunches, and after-school clubs free of charge. The London Assembly say that they should work with schools to reduce child hunger. Same solution. So it's the same solution. And to start early and use the schools to their full potential for breakfast clubs, school lunches. Now, those of us in this country, if you think, well, this is free school meals, free breakfast clubs. If a mother knows that they can send the child to school hungry, knowing that the school will provide a Weetabix and some milk, then that's what the, children, the mothers will do. We believe, as a practitioner, as a systems thinker, we need to build resilience. And I was talking to a colleague over lunch about the, the how um, a pilot took place where uh, genetically modified seeds were used to produce a crop which failed and because there was no resilience built into the food system, the local population were put into a very vulnerable position. So food banks do not supply any fresh produce. And what my organisation has is an unbelievable track record. I run East London Food Access, and in my borough of Hackney, I run seven stalls at which food, fresh produce, is made available in absolute abundance to local people. We promote health and well-being through increased access and consumption of fresh produce. So, together with the food banks and with UCL, we're running a program where we're not giving fresh produce to recipients of emergency food aid. We're actually giving them a 50% voucher. They can buy the fresh produce at half price. They retain their dignity. They retain their purchase power. They're actually incentivized. And they're actually welcome to our stores as anybody else, but they get a 50% off voucher. We have uh, been delivering fresh produce boxes to seniors since 2010, and this is the program that Miriam Sala presented to you, Abu Dhabi. So we also felt that we can drop off boxes in groups of 10. This is a very sensitive flicker, isn't it? And um, we've set up collaborative buying groups where a group like this can actually collectively purchase full boxes of fresh produce instead of this individually, highly individualistic, going to buy exactly what you want from the supermarket in bulk, and half of it goes in the bin, how could we collectively buy produce? So the research is undertaken by UCL. Now, it's embargoed, so I can't tell you what the results are. Oops. But I will tell you what the result is because this will be the next, uh, we can present hopefully to the next conference, is that surprisingly there was a, a change in the mood of those res of participants who were in receipt of emergency food aid, their mood increased. Their mo they felt better by eating fresh produce, which is a, it's a sort of this behavior change of this recognition that actually you feel better when you eat fresh produce. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.